Hi and welcome to this demo which is about Open Network Linux. So in this demo we got one of these open networking switches which is the H Core AS5712. It's a 48 port 10 gigabit per second switch and we got uh, two laptops here that we will be connecting to port number one and port number two of this switch and within this demo we will load Open Network Linux on this switch and we will also load the open NSL Broadcom open NSL drivers on the switch and we will configure the switch to allow the communication between the two ports which we have here now since the machines we got here is just the two laptops uh, you know one laptop is here is connected with this orange cable is connected to port one number one of this switch as you can see here so we got one of these uh, SFPs, SFP Plus, 1 gigabit per second, which converts the 10 gigabit per second port into a 1 gigabit per second, and we can connect it to the standard laptop, standard machine with the copper connection. So this switch has, as you can see, it has 48 ports, and here I got one uh, 10 gigabit per second fiber SFP, and it has 6 40 gigabit per second uh, as well QSFPs here. Uh, we got two more ports here with one of them here is the standard console uh, the RS232 or the serial port console which I have connected through the, the USB to serial uh, converter and is connected to our test machine here and we will also uh, use the management interface this is the dedicated auto band management interface of the switch which we will be using it for uh, uploading the ONL inside the switch. So I will connect this uh, brown color cable here and I will use this cable for doing the communication. Uh, <clears throat> so we got this laptop. This laptop will be used for our main test. Uh, this is the small diagram we got here. So we got 10.001 which is the laptop here we got on this side as you can see the IP configuration that 10.001 is configured on this ThinkPad laptop and we got the other one which is 10.003 which will be this machine once we finish the configuration once we finish loading the open network linux on on the switch itself so what we are going to do is uh in this demo we will download the open network linux after downloading the open network linux we will install the open network linux on this switch which is the as5712 uh, we will boot up the switch uh, assign the management ips and we have to copy the open nsl on the switch itself so this open nsl is a piece of software which is uh given by the manufacturer so it's it's a broadcom software but it has been provided by the oem vendor so in this case the h core has provided this open nsl software to me and once that is done we load the the open nsl we will launch the open nsl and we will do the basic configuration to create a basic layer 2 configuration between between the two ports in this switch so that's what we are going to achieve I can power up this switch I will turn off most of the fans of this switch just to make sure it doesn't make that much noise but still it will be a little bit noisy so <clears throat> in the beginning you know this is the during the startup of the switch and let's connect towards we connect to the console of the switch to see what exactly is going on and what is required to load the open network Linux on this switch. And for those of you who are uh, looking, considering why this the yellow cable is, so in the beginning, once we start loading the, uh, the open network on the switch, I will use this brown cable which is connected to the auto fan management of the switch we will use this cable on this small laptop to load open network linux and once that is done we will disconnect this cable and we will connect the, the yellow cable to this laptop so you will not be able to see at that time when i'm doing this, this piece of work and this yellow cable is connected to port number two from this switch so the laptop, the two laptops, the ThinkPad and this box, the, the other laptop, they will be connected to the two ports of the switch and in this demo we load, we load the Open Network Linux, Open NSL and we allow the communication between these two ports. Alright, so as you've seen, 
uh, the physical setup now we are uh, looking at our drawing again so uh, we got a management PC which is this machine which you see here uh, we will use this machine to provision this uh, the bare metal switch and loading the open network Linux on it. So to manage a PC, it has uh, it got the DHCP server which uh, which uses the DNS mask and it got the FTP server as well, which I'm using a, a very lightweight Python based uh, FTP server on this machine. And we are connected through the console, the the USB to serial connector. Uh, connected to the serial port of the switch and also we have that LAN cable connected directly to the to the management port of the of the of the Ethernet switch uh, the bare metal switch uh, so that's that brown cable which I was showing you earlier uh, this, this machine got a static IP on this interface the 192.168.3.1 and we will use this uh, interface for loading the open network Linux now to start with we will go to the open network website we download the uh, open network Linux from there and we will start the installation uh, on the bare metal switch after that so let's go to the open network linux website which is openetlinux.org uh, from here we can just jump into the download the binaries download here uh, once you come to the binaries download there are lots of options here uh, which i choose the latest version which is 2018 6.19 um, and here also again we got something some other different installers so as you see here there are main differences we got arm 64 we got amv 64s and we got power pc uh, and we got also debian 9 and debian 8 uh, so in r so this uh, these are the diff the differences the architecture of the cpus of the uh, of the bare metal switches so they are different so some of the bare metal switches they come with a cpu board based on an intel processor or they may come based on you know some kind of power pc processor or just the arm processor so you have different option of the of the processor so the open network linux has been compiled for different type of operating uh, different type of cpus and based on the architecture of the processor and the CPU board you need to install, you need to download the correct version. So in our case, uh, the switch which I got here is that H-Core AS5712 and I know it is using an Intel based uh, processor. So I use the Debian version 8, which uh, we got here and I use the installed installer. The other one is SWI installer. They are used for generating the SWI, the, the base core image, which we don't need to do that here. So I just click here and I start downloading this, uh, the Debian 8 AMD64 installed installer file. So let's give it some time. Uh, this is around, uh, I think it should be around uh, half a gigabyte something let it get some time to get it downloaded all right so now we can see the download is over uh, let's see where this file has been copied it's copied in my downloads okay so what we need to do is we need to go to the download folder which is this one open onl master i'm copying this file to we got a folder here which is for the FTP, the FTP users, and I copy this file here. Now you see I have another file also in my FTP directory here, which is open NS open NSL Acton 350. It's a Debian package. This file is it's a binary drivers of the Broadcom chipset within the switch. So I have got I got this file from uh, from the H core, uh, so this file is supplied by the uh, by the manufacturer of the switch, and which is compatible with this version of the Open Network Linux. So once we install the Open Network Linux, I will also install this Debian package, which enables the CPU board of the of the white box switch of the bare metal switch to, in order to communicate, be able to communicate with the Broadcom chipset inside the switch so there is a pci uh, express connection between the cpu board and uh, the switch silicon which this file this dri the driver is inside this file allows uh, that communication okay so we got this file here now let's 
git uh, terminal um, let's go to the uh, FTP folder so it's home FTP user and here is our file name uh, let me copy this file and I just create my installation script so once the switch starts uh, we, will, we will use this command to uh, load the uh, to tell the switch that we need to we need you to go and do the FTP to this machine which is the exactly the same machine I have an FTP server running on port 2121 and just download this particular file which we just downloaded so now in order to do this uh, I need to go and turn on the switch uh, it may be a little bit noisy and once we turn on the switch uh, let me uh, we just need to make a console connection to the switch where we will use the uh, well-known putty command to connect to the to the console uh, so for connecting to the putty uh, using the putty to connect to the uh, to the switch we use the putty we call the usb uh, the tty usb zero and we call it with these with the baldev uh, 115200 uh, 8 bits uh, n1 and no uh, hardware flow flow control uh, for this command uh, we paste it here and now let me power on the switch and after that we should be able to see the output here uh, it could be a little bit noisy also okay so now we got the switch powered on this is the initial bios of the output of this of the switch now we got a small little grub grab menu so by default it goes to ONI to install the operating system so ONI is the uh, open network install environment where it loads a small kernel uh, Linux kernel which brings up the switch it manage it, it it brings up the management interface it tries it gives the environment for installation of the operating system on the switch uh, now as you can see here in the switch here it brings up uh, Eternal Zero, which is that management interface with this. Uh, I tried the DHCP on this management interface and it got the IP address also from the uh, from the DHCP server where we are running on this machine. So 192.163.119 is the IP address of the switch. Uh, so by default it tries to do a TFTP, you know, trying to look into the folder based on the MAC address of the switch, try to get the only installer by default which is not there uh, we don't have any tftp server running so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell the switch that hey uh, this is the install url that you know we have to go so ftp to our server on port 2121 and download this file and install it so let me copy this file this command now here i have the only command and let me see why i cannot paste here okay install url is ftp oh, slash slash six eight two one one dot one one three column twenty one twenty one slash you can do a very quick uh change here that lets me rename this file instead of this big file just we call it y now yep so this makes it much easier uh oh i know okay connecting to the server fetching y now so it looks like let's see is it really downloading or not this is our FTP server which is running on port number 2121 oh I put the wrong IP address here actually I'm sorry so the correct IP is 192.168 
3.1 okay here we go so it just downloaded the file 186 megabytes and this is the installer script of the oni which has you know the installation script you know it it creates different partitions on the switch and you know whatever we are talking about here is all about the uh the cpu module of the of the bare metal of a uh, white box switch the h core switch which we got uh, nothing is happening right now on the asic uh, of the switch silicon so everything is happening on that small little embedded pc uh different partitions are being created you know the the image file is being copied you know uh, on the on the switch the the file is the, the, the partitions are getting formatted and it builds also a grub installer you know at, at the end let's give it some time uh for this to get completed okay as you can see the installation is complete now the switch is doing a restart Okay, so now the switch is booting up with ONL. Here you could see that, you know, the MA1 net dev has been installed, is enabled. So MA1 is a management interface. That same out of band management interface of the switch is the same interface which we use for loading the the, the the switch operating system the own and operating system inside inside the switch Okay, and we got the uh, login prompt for Open Network Linux. Let's use the root and ONL. Okay. Looks like the fans are screaming. okay so now if i do a uname dash a you can see it's a it's a linux kernel 4.14 open network linux uh is running in this machine open network linux it has so the, the interface is just the root linux it's debian linux and it got some commands also like onl uh onlpd uh, onlp dump so onlp dump it provides a full dump of the of the switch let's say if i run this command it gives all the details about the the switch information so these are the information which onl has read from different uh different chipsets inside the switch so that uh uh, the CPU board it has an I2C connection to to the to the board, and these are the information which the the ONL is able to read. So, for example, manufacturer's action, you know, the product. This is a AS5712 54 port uh, switch. 
running on this the ONI version and and the other stuff so for example the next one is the power supply so power supply one you know it doesn't have any model information uh, it is present uh, as there but it's not connected to the power so that's why it's not showing any details power supply 2 is powered on it has a model number it has the you know all the details of the power supply and then we got the information like the thermal the, the thermal information of the power supply the LEDs these are all the LEDs because the LEDs are also driven by uh, by different chipsets and different uh, the thermals the thermals and also the fans so here you can see that you know that this the, all the fans are present here and also the RPM for each fan so open network Linux it managed all of this stuff you know all the fair defaults uh, accessories of the of the switch you know within the switch and also the SFP information so as you remember we had two SFPs connected to the uh, to the port number one and two so port number one it got uh, SFP inside so open network Linux is able to read the EP ROM information of the of the SFP so the information from the SFP plus is uh, is here and the other ports are all empty and if you remember I had one small little uh, 10 gigabit per second fiber uh, multi-mode SFP also on port number 46 which is showing here and there we go all right so now the next thing for us to do is uh, we have to set up the management interface so let's do a if config so as, as you can see uh, we got only one management MA1 interface on this switch so MA1 is the management interface that out of band management interface which is now presented to open network Linux uh, so this is the same interface which mm, in the previous uh, step it got the IP address from the DHCP server on this machine and we were managed to upload the ONL software uh, inside that so now this is the same interface it doesn't have any IP address nothing now we have to configure this interface with the IP address because we need to copy that uh, files we need to copy the we need to copy the files uh, the open NSL files inside this box so let's go ahead and add the IP address So I'm assigning 192.163.10 on this device. Again, I have to MA1 minus 192.163.10 slash 24. We do a if config and okay, the IP address is there. Let me try to ping uh, my machine 192.163.1. Yep, so we have established the connectivity. All right, that's fine. And the next step is we will copy the file, that file which I was showing you. Let me go back to our terminal here. We got the open NSL Acton, this Debian, uh, this, uh, this dev file. So this is the driver, the open NSL driver, which I'm planning to copy on the on the switch and I have to install it in order to enable the communication between open NSL, between the open network Linux and the open NSL, the, the, the chipset driver. So open NSL is just the SDK library from Broadcom, which enables communication with the ASIC of the switch, the switch silicon itself. So from here, I should be able to let's see if we can SSH to the to the to the switch itself. One nine two one six eight is three dot ten. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like it is running. Let me try to do. And the password was ONL. Yeah, so this is the switch itself. So, all right. So now let's copy the open NSL uh, installer file to the switch. Uh, we can do it with the SCP command. So SCP open NSL to root at 192.168.3.10. Oh, 
slash root. And the password is ONL. Okay, the file looks like it's copied already. Uh, we have SSH access also to the switch now, but uh, we can use still the, the console. Uh, okay, so here we go. The, the file is here. Now we need to install this package on the switch. We use the dpkg dash dash install open and so. So it looks like the package has been installed. To check that, uh, if I do ls mode, I should be able to see the new kernel module, which I don't see them now here. I need to run an extra command to enable the open NSL. Yeah, I need to run the open NSL set up and there we go so now we got two new actually three uh, kernel modules uh, the broadcom knet user bde kernel bd these are the modules which has been installed by this debian package inside our uh, inside the switch and these are the drivers, uh, the, the kernel modules which are using, which are communicating to the drivers in order to, to reach to the switch. Now, in next step, we should be able to start running the, the OpenNSL, uh, some of the examples of OpenNSLs, in order to uh, start communicating with the, uh, with the switch silicon. All right, so now let's start uh, running the open NSL. So there is a folder called slash user and if I'm not mistaken, it's bean open NSL dash action examples. So we go in this folder and uh, here we got some few examples here. Uh, so by the way, let's have a look at the OpenSL Acton. So here uh, we have we have only the examples for there. Uh, the other files like the binaries and the drivers, they are all installed in different locations. Uh, now here I will run the example L2 firewall because it creates a layer 2 switch. Uh, it programs the ASIC to become like a layer 2 switch and also it allows us to create some kind of firewall between the ports. So I use this example. So I'm going to run the example. Let me do it clear before that. So because it generates lots of outputs, it's better we see. Uh, example L2 firewall. Okay. So here. Uh, the example starts, it loads the driver, uh, as you can see, you know, PCI unit 0, uh, the chipset is BCM56854, so this is a Broadcom Trident 2 chipset inside this switch, which is a 720 gigabit per second uh, Ethernet switch, and this is the driver which is using, and it says, I found the board, so this is the board, the motherboard, and which is the AS5712 and it says I'm now connected to the PCI device the Broadcom 56852 the Trident 2 and I have you know it, 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 it's ready to manage the, the ASIC now this example actually provide us with few options so we can create firewall remove firewall show the layer 2 table of the switch uh, safe configuration to the switch ASIC here, you know, the, the, the ASIC cache and also we can, you know, do some stuff, you know, we have a diagnostic shell as well. So if I go to port, uh, the number 3, because I have the first laptop connected to the, to the device, I'm expecting that should be enabled, but, you know, we don't see anything, right? the layer 2 uh, of the switch doesn't show anything 
so I'm guessing that that's the reason for those SFPs which we have inserted and I know that you know that port is not showing up so we will use the launching the diagnostic shell port option number nine okay so now as you can see we get to a shell called drive shell uh, we can do a help here so these are all the commands which are directly talking to the switch ASIC so we can use these commands to see what's going on on the switch on the ports so we can get some kind of diagnostic information of, of the ports for example so I'm interested in to see uh, what's the problem what's going on with the ports uh, so the port mode and uh, yeah the port stat command will be able to help us so I enter the port stat so port stat command it shows all the ports on the ASIC which are all of these 10 gig ports and as you can see the port XE0 and XE1 which are port number 1 and 2 these two ports are both showing down they are showing 10 gigabit per second and they are both showing down now to change the status of the ports or do the configuration of the port I can do I can just say ports uh, port 1 so port 1 uh, these are the information of the port one. It says uh, it's a 10 gigabit per second XC zero and all stuff So now I have to configure this port to become a 1 gigabit per second port So I will say uh, speed equal to 1000 and medium equal to the medium is currently set as fiber But we know it's a copper interface we have connected to and copper and we change the speed also right yep so after entering this command uh, if I enter port stats uh, let's see okay so now port number one is showing up port number one is showing up and I will do the same thing also on the port number two ports so before doing that before doing that let's quickly before enabling the port 2 let's quickly go back here so we finished almost uh, what we were supposed to do here so the management PC is still connected with the TTY USB of the console port here I got this machine running connected to the port uh, to the bare metal switch to the switch on the port 1 now uh, we will use the same machine we will disconnect this port this cable and we will connect it to port 2 of the switch and I will change the IP address here so let me change the IP address of the machine now here you can change it from just from here and I can change the IP address from simply from here so we will change that to 10.00.3 the same swap and mask okay so the IP address is changed now. I can verify that from from here if I do if config. Yep. The IP address is not changed yet. I will I will do a restart of the of the networking service. And here uh, so we change this IP, I need to change that cable now. Uh, so I will disconnect this cable and we we'll connect this back here and now let me also do let me change the configuration of this port so I will say port number two speed equal to 1000 and medium equal to copper now since nothing is connected there right now still it will show down as you can see oh now it's showing up but actually there is nothing connected there right now now I will connect the ports the cables and we will set up a ping uh, between these two okay so I just swapped the cable and you can see here we got the ear uh, I mean notification here that the management interface is disconnected now uh, the reason for that is now 
this PC, you know, this connection is not there anymore. And, you know, this is the, the PC actually is connected to, uh, to the port too. So that's what uh, has been done. Uh, now, on this machine, uh, let's see what's the IP address. So the IP address is 10.0003. And I got the other machine connected to this switch with the IP address 10.0.0.1. Uh, let's see if we can ping 10.0.0.1 from here, which is you can see it is pinging and we can reach to the to the other one. So this means that the switch is now is configured with the basic layer two switch uh, function to be able to communicate between these two parts. Now, if you go back to our switch silicon, uh, let me quit from here. Or if you want, you can do again the port stat. Uh, it shows that you know both port number one and two are both up, ports running. And let me exit from here. Uh, quit. Yep. Uh, we are go. We are back again. This show. So if I do this number three, show the layer two table. Now we can see there are two MAC addresses, you know, here. So port one and port two, there are two MAC addresses. And so I believe port number two should be the MAC address of this machine, which ends with E256. Uh, let's have a look what is the MAC address of this machine. Uh, so our interface here, yeah, it is showing that, you know, the MAC address is E256. So it's the same. So this is how we manage to configure and program the switch silicon uh, inside this bare metal switch using the Open NSL. So Open NSL, it it is it's it's like a library and SDK from Broadcom, which you can use it for you know writing different applications on the switch itself. So you can create a kind of agent software running on top of the Open Network Linux. And using the Open NSL to communicate with the switch, uh, with the switch ASIC. So you can, uh, you know, do the kind of you know traditional kind of switching. Can create some interface to create VLANs or do the, you know, modification of the of the switch tables. Also, there is another piece of software from Broadcom which is called OFDPA. You can use that agent uh, instead of uh, Open NSL. To directly communicate with the table, so OFDPA normally is used like an open flow agent uh, for the Broadcom switches, and you can use that to connect directly one of these uh, bare metal switches with Broadcom uh, chipset, which are if if they are supported by the manufacturer and you got the drivers and the package, you can install the OFDPA and connect directly the uh, the switch to Open Daylight or any other. Open flow SDN controller. So this was about our demo about Open Network Linux. Uh, it went all the details. And uh, please, if you have any question, please write in the forum or contact me directly. Thank you very much.